Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to wrangle data or data wrangling in this episode. So let's get started. And we're back. When talking about data wrangling, uh, the main objective when you're trying to analyze any data set that you encounter is to help you make, gain an insight to help you make the best decision possible given a scenario. But in reality, sometimes that's, that's as easy as it looks simply because when you collect data, there are missing elements, missing information, could be human error, could be a lot of factors. But the problem is what do you do with that scenario here? So let's take a look at sample data set here to illustrate and how to solve that dilemma here. So here we have a sample data set comprised of mutual funds. So in the perspective of an investor here, you're trying to look at which company do you think is the best course of action to make the best choice to invest on that would yield with the highest return. So each company, you have a list of, uh, I think roughly less than 50 companies here, and you're given different variables from the different fund types all the way to the rankings that they are uh, ranked according to their Morningstar rank to, make, to, to help you make that best decision. But you notice in the data set there are missing elements here, whether it's uh, qualitative or quantitative by nature. So how do you solve this dilemma? There are two ways of doing that. So you can use uh, tabulation or using frequency to solve the dilemma and as well as using numerical measures to solve the dilemma here. So, so let's take a closer look. So to do that, so we'll start first with the quant qualitative or categorical data for the fund type as well as morning star rank we'll be using frequency here to give us more insight here so we need to create a pivot table so we'll use the existing worksheet to illustrate the outcome okay so we'll uh, try to analyze fund type first so you can see there are three categories here uh, debt equity fixed income and uh, I think IE is index fund and you may notice right away the highest frequency is uh, debt equity here. So you will take note of that and use that information to fill in the rest of the values. Now is it an exact science? Of, of course not and there is always a caveat when doing this process. Will it uh, give a certain bias on that particular category? Of course it will but rather than you know leave it blank which will give you an inconclusive information as well. So take it with a grain also whether this would work best for you or not. But in this process, we'll try to fill in the values here. But the question here is, how are we going to fill in the values? In this case, the categories here. So if you notice, uh, you have several uh, missing companies that has missing information. So how do you fill in the values? Now, the trick here is to go to data tabs and select filter here. And you'll notice there's a drop down option here. And here's the key part to make it easier for everyone. Because if you're to do this manually, it'll take a long time, especially if you have a larger, longer data set here. So what you do here is click the date drop down option and you notice the select all option. So uncheck that. So and only check the blank uh, category. So you'll notice when you did that, it will only show the one that has the missing elements here, which is good for us. So to type it in, we remember that the highest frequency is DE or the debt equity. So we'll do that. So we'll copy and paste to the rest. Okay. So if we did that, so if we were to select all of it again, and you'll see it's already populated the entire data, which is good. And we'll do the same for the others. So for Morningstar, so we'll copy and paste the same table and uncheck fun type. In this case, we'll check Morningstar rank and drag it again here. So you can see here the highest count has uh, belongs to three star here. So we'll fill in the missing values there uh, with a three star uh, value. So we'll do the same process. We select and then select blanks. So it's three star. Okay, and then copy and then paste to the others. And then if you check all of it again, you will see all of the missing. Uh, values has been populated now how about for numerical or quantitative data here it's very simple as well you simply get the mean or the average here 
So to simply do that, so let's get the headings here to make it easier for us. Okay. So we get the average for each of those columns. So simply type in the function formula average, wrong spelling. Select the entire column here, so all the way, all the way to the bottom. Okay. And we get a value of 29.409. So we're gonna make it easier to read. So let's reduce it to two decimal places. And then do the same for the other to get the average. So once you have the average, you can again simply repeat the process by plugging in those values in those missing columns or cells here. So let's start with the net asset value. So that's 29.41. So we want to remember that. So 29.41. Okay, and then let's copy and paste the rest okay then check it out all again then we did it so for the five-year average return that's 15.76 so we'll do the same again 15.76 copy and paste again sorry paste the rest okay then check all of it again and then for the expense ratio, it's 0.88%. So let's do the same process again. Okay. It's 0.88. So let's copy and paste the rest. Okay. So if we were to check all of it again, and voila. So you now filled up all of the values, the missing values here. So you can now start the process of analyzing or describing the data here give an extra tip for this data set now in in typical fashion when you're trying to analyze whether you're using tabulation which we already did or you may use uh, a visual or a graph here which i can showcase here so let's try to create a bar graph here for morningstar rank so we can use pivot chart so we'll use a bar graph here to showcase so let's edit properly so frequency on morning star rank okay for the y-axis we'll call it frequency wrong spelling again okay for the x-axis you can see the text there you go so that's morning star rank okay now let's hide the other field then voila so you can use this to give you insight but practically it's telling you the same information that the three star ranking has the highest categories highest frequency at that now obviously uh, a more powerful insight is to use numerical measures so we've used central tendency here to give us insight here uh, what's the average uh, net asset value five-year return and expense ratio now a more powerful uh, numerical measures that many often neglect and don't even use is using correlation here that's why uh, correlating values is important but you may notice you can only correlate three co three of the variables here which is net asset five year and expense rate since they have all numerical values but how about fund type and morningstar rank they're categorical so could you use them since they're qualitative well no of course since Correlation requires both variables uh, to be correlated has to be numerical by nature. But we have a trick here. So we can convert those categorical data into numerical ones so that we can use correlation to help us uh, gain a better insight here. So to do that, we need to create a separate column. So let's start with the fund type. Okay, so let's copy the heading here. Now, how do we assign a value here? It's very simple. So if you go back to your frequency table here, you can see there are three different categories. So you can assign three values. You can start with one, two, and three. Very simple. So you'll assign one to debt equity, two to fixed income, and then three for index fund here. Simple as that. And then we'll do the same for the uh, Morningstar rank here. So two for two star, three for three star, four for four star, five and five star. Simple as that. Now, how do we plug this in? Now, obviously, you have an option to uh, 
uh, to input this manually which will take a lot of time especially if you have a large data as i mentioned earlier so to expedite this we will use if then else function in excel which is very helpful here so you just have to input the first first row there and then copy and paste the rest of the way which will be easier so let's use the if so if the logical test is we're testing the cell uh, beside it that's b2 okay if it's equals to so you have to put a quotation specifically so if it's de so it doesn't matter if it's capital letters or not so the output if it's de it would output one and then if it's false we'll start another if statement then b2 is equals to we'll go to the next one if it's fi or fixed income it will display two and then if it's false again we'll start another statement but in this case we don't have to type in it. we just type in three and voila so you can see de is one that's correct so let's double click and populate the rest so you can see ie should be three is correct fi is two is correct so you can check all of it all the way down is correct so once you've done that it's converted to numerical values so we can now hide fun type now now let's do the same for morning star rank here so insert here then let's copy the heading so again let's use the function formula so we have to uh, extend the formula that we did uh, for uh, for the first one since there were only three categories here we have four categories but it's the same process here so if uh, in this case we're setting the logic test for the h2 this particular cell if it's equal to uh, two star Oops. so it has to be specific so it has to be the specific word or value otherwise uh, if you mistype or missing characters or symbols you will you will get an error or it will not work properly here so if it's two star it should output two if it's false then we'll create another if statement if h2 is equals to three star okay output three if it's false another one if h2 is equals to uh, four stars dash four star okay and we should output four and then else if it's false it's five okay so two stars should output two so if we were to double click three star is three four is four stars four three two so you can see all of it is displaying the right output so let's remove the decimal places and voila so now we can use correlation sorry hide this one so we can now use correlation in all five variables here so let's go to data tab and select data analysis then go to correlation and then the columns has been selected already make sure it's columns not by rows and then check the box for labels and then let's output in the same row uh, in the blank cell and select ok so let's move it up okay. let's wrap the text okay let's do some editing to make it more presentable line okay so we want to highlight the key values here so we want to use heat map here so let's use color scales so let's see which of the variables have a high a hardly correlated now the highest value you can see is 0.45 so expense ratio and five-year average return has the highest correlation despite that they only have moderate relationship while the rest are you know very weak or to even negative relationships which is not of interest of us and does it give us clear insight obviously you can do hypothesis testing here uh to con to be conclusive here but based on the information provided here you know five-year return and expense ratio is a good indicator but it's not conclusive it's not a strong relationship so which gives me what information so with regards to making the decision which funds to which company should i invest what type of funds to yield me with the highest uh, return 
well, the, the information here is very limiting. So in terms of information, obviously more company options in the list would be preferable and more variables that we could look at that would give us uh, better information here. But, you know, given the limited information we have, you know, we are able to uh, come up with substantial analysis here. And actually, we could do more our descriptive analysis, creating more tables, uh, frequency tables, cross tabulations, even charts, uh, uh, scatter plots, and, you know, uh, look at the relationships of different variables, see if there's anything significant. But, you know, in the correlation that we have here, as mentioned, so let me zoom in. The values are not, you know, spectacular in the sense that the information provided uh, is not as clear cut. Wait, uh, let's zoom out again. Ah, there you go. Okay, so if you notice here that the values are not, you know, overwhelming in terms of which factors we should look at in terms of, in, you know, making the investment. Obviously, the different factors that are provided here are very limited as well. So the information provided is limited. So you want to uh, collect more information. That's why you want to ask the right questions before you make the important critical decision here. But the point here is made when in terms of, you know, understanding data, just because you have missing elements or missing information doesn't mean that you should do away with it. And obviously, there are caveats when you're trying to fill in the missing values because it's not the exact one. So, data may be slightly skewed to one category to another. So, always take that in your consideration when you're making that final decision. But at the end of the day, it should help you make that final decision and hopefully make the best one at that here. Anyway, I think that concludes our video for today. Uh, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to help support this channel. Actually, if you have any question with regard to the video today, you can always leave your comments down below and I'll try to get back to you. And you can also make suggestions as to what type of videos you know, or tips you would you like to, to, to learn from, from our channel here. Anyway, uh, if you leave your suggestion here, maybe we could create more videos related to that one as well. Anyway, as always, I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.